Welcome back to CBS This Morning. We're going to begin with the new focus of the Democratic presidential contest. And that focus, of course, is South Carolina, an important moment in the race for the party's nomination. Gail King is in Charleston ahead of tomorrow's Democratic debate, which, of course, is co-hosted by CBS News. Bernie Sanders, the party's current national frontrunner, is looking to widen his lead after a decisive victory in Saturday's Nevada caucus. His challengers are trying to build some kind of momentum going into next week's Super Tuesday showdown. Let's go straight to Gail now in South Carolina. Gail, good morning. Good morning to you both. The debate will be held inside the building right behind me. This is the Gilliard Center. This is the last time the candidates will make their case to a national audience before Saturday's primary here in South Carolina. So a lot of people are paying more attention to this one and Super Tuesday, too, which is one week from tomorrow. Seven candidates will be on stage, including billionaire Mike Bloomberg, who is not on the ticket here in South Carolina. Tom Steyer will also debate after just qualifying thanks to his support in the latest CBS News Battleground tracker poll. Our poll shows that Joe Biden is clinging to a lead here in this state, just five points ahead of Bernie Sanders. South Carolina, as you may know, is a crucial state for Joe Biden, where his support among black voters has been seen as a big strength of his campaign, but that appears to be changing. Black voters are likely to make up about 60 percent of the electorate here. And the former vice president is expected to get an endorsement from influential House Majority Whip, that's James Clyburn, on Wednesday. He told us that he was not going to weigh in until after the debate. This primary is open. What does that mean? It means any registered voter can take part regardless of your party. 54 Democratic delegates are at stake on Saturday, along with the springboard momentum going into Super Tuesday next week. So, as we say, it's a very big deal. Tim Scott is a Republican senator from South Carolina. He joins us only on CBS this morning. Senator Scott, thank you for getting up early and joining yes, us yes, on the table. Anytime Gil asks, I say <laughs> yeah, yes. Sure, That's the way sure, it works. Sure. Bottom line. I call and you're hiding under the table. Tell her I'm not here. <laughs> but, no. Senator Scott, let's, let's start with your thoughts yes, about this, about the Democratic Party. Are you going to be watching this debate tomorrow with a bowl of popcorn waiting to see what's going to happen uh, next? But uh, many twists and turns. Certainly a big bowl of popcorn. I call the last debate the thriller in Manila. It was an amazing debate from my perspective. 20 million folks tuned in. Why? You saw Elizabeth Warren go after Mike Bloomberg with reckless abandonment. You saw Bernie Sanders almost unscathed during the debate. That perhaps is the most dangerous combination you could see on a debate stage. Someone being targeted, but the front runner being left alone. Mm -hmm. uh, if things are going to change for this nation from a Democrat perspective, someone's got to take Bernie Sanders on head to head mm -hmm. tomorrow night. The thriller in South Carolina, right there in that Yeah, book. that's a beautiful yeah, building. It's a beautiful. You have Charleston here. Center's an amazing place. Do you think that Bernie Sanders is the biggest threat to President Trump right now? I do think so. I would say that the biggest threat to President Trump is President Trump. What do you, if, mean, what do you mean by that? Well, if he's on his game, as he was at the State of the Union, I don't think there's a candidate in the country that can beat him. If there is a second choice other than himself, it would be Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders brings that outside game in a similar fashion that President Trump did in 2016. Think about the similarities. In 2016, Republican leadership, Republican wisdom said that there's no way in the world, out of the 17 candidates, Donald Trump will exactly. be the president. This year... In some way, it seems to mimic this to me, I what's think it's happening with Bernie very Sanders. very similar. Yeah. And the, the tea leaves suggest that the Democrat Party is looking for every way to stop Bernie Sanders from winning, even if he has the plurality, which I think would cause an implosion on the foundation of the Democrat Party. You think Bernie Sanders would be the hardest candidate for Donald Trump to beat? And who would be the easiest? The easiest would be Mike Bloomberg. Wouldn't Mike Bloomberg really? has been so provocative. He has so many uh, challenging story headlines. The narratives for, as President Trump calls him, Little Mike, would be easy for President Trump to take. Aren't you sick of advantage. the nicknames? Do the nicknames bother you? Well, listen, I would not use, I would not call folks nicknames, but it worked. But you're it, calling him Little it, Mike. It worked in the Republican primary. <laughs> I watched uh, the candidate I started supporting, Marco Rubio, uh, be, be be made into a caricature yes, along yes. the way. So what President Trump has that uh, almost no other Republican candidate has ever had, and I haven't seen it on the Democrat side, is this. He understands media. Yes. Everything feels like a, a show when he's on stage because he understands how to get the audience involved. You haven't mentioned Joe Biden in this conversation. I think many people thought we'd be talking more about Joe Biden in this particular state. Well, three weeks ago, I did, too. 
literally I said that with a 30 point lead here in my home state that mm -hmm. Joe Biden was invincible. What we've seen since then is a narrowing of the margin, not with Steyer, who's pulling votes away from uh, Joe Biden, not with Bloomberg because he's not on the ballot, but because Bernie Sanders is doing something in 26, 2020 that he could not do in 2016, which is getting African Americans and Hispanic voters to take a second look at his campaign. I think perhaps the primary reason is mm -hmm. health care. If you look at what he stands at, what stands out the most in his campaign is he is undeniable a socialist, but he is strong and clear and competent on the issues he supports. And the issue of health care is a big issue in the African American community. And I think it is the issue why he ended up with 51% of the Hispanic vote in Nevada. U.S. officials have raised concerns about the Russians interfering in our election, yes. targeting Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders. Yes. Does that concern you that that's now an issue again? Well, and that Donald Trump doesn't seem to be taking it seriously, going against his own U.S. intelligence officials? No, I think we should take election interference from any foreign nation very seriously to include Russia and anyone else. The good news is, uh, having had a conversation with those folks who were in the House intelligence briefing, mm -hmm. what was reported out is inconsistent with what actually happened within the room. So I think we should all be on our guard as it relates to election interference. But what it typically comes in the form of is social media, uh, Facebook, and trying to influence voters in a specific direction, not actually manipulating the, the votes themselves, but the people who actually cast the votes. All right, Tim Scott, thank you. Will you be watching? Oh, yes, ma'am. This okay. is going to be fun to watch this one. All right. I hope so. Thank you, Senator Scott. Delighted. I'm really happy to be in your thank state you. today. Thank you for being in my hometown. CBS News will co-host tomorrow night's Democratic presidential debate. If you heard, Nora O'Donnell and I will moderate. We'll be joined by Margaret Brennan, Major Garrett, and Bill Whitaker. 60 Minutes in the Questioning. We've got the A-Team. It's co-hosted by the Congressional Black Caucus Institute and the Democratic National Committee. And Twitter is a partner this time. You can see the debate tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, right here on CBS and CBSN. And if you would like to include a question for the candidates, you can participate. How? Submit it on Twitter by using the hashtag DemDebate. We're looking at all of them.